All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna battle my Canon R6 with the FX3 that I have on loan from Sony at the moment. And I'm not particularly interested in testing stabilization and a lot of other things. I'm mostly interested in testing the quality of the image and how the colors hold up because I'm coming from the R6 and I want to switch to the FX3, have it on loan as set. And I'm mostly just curious as to the image quality that I've seen recently and been blown away from the FX3 just for my first three days of testing it. If that's mostly biased because it's a new camera and or new to me at least, and it's a camera that I've been wanting for a long time, or if it's actually better than the R6. Now, I'm not saying these are the same cameras. This is a hybrid camera, this is more video focused, and they have different features and different purposes. And I wanna switch more over to video, so that's why I wanna test this one. So it's not me coming in here and saying that one is better than the other. It depends on the purposes and what you need it for. For what I need, so far, the FX3 looks like it's better. It will still have the features that I need over the R6, but I'm curious to see if I can actually see a difference in the quality as well. So I'm gonna head outside now. I'm gonna shoot a couple of different shots around the city to make some different compositions, do the exact same thing for both of them. I have the 24-70 f2.8 RF lens on the R6 and the 24-70 f2.8 G Master Mark II on the Sony FX3. So, should be the exact same lenses, the highest quality from both brands. And while the R6 is not the absolute flagship, it still is in the higher category of the Canon cameras and the FX3 is also not the maximum cinema camera that they have. So I guess some similar, the fair battle in that way. So let's head outside and test them out. While I test, you will see the shots next to each other without knowing which one is which. So you can leave a comment down below to let me know which one you think is which, and then we'll take them into the Vince Resolve and have a look at the differences, if there are any. So let's get started. Ready to go. Let's get some shots. All right, so I'm walking to a different park today because I thought just to mix it up for myself and to do those different test shots. So it's a little bit of a walk there. I'm trying to catch some B-roll for once while we're going there and then we're gonna get started on the test shots. All right, so I think I found the ideal spot here behind me is that bridge. So I think that's a good first test for, I'm just gonna put it low here using that. PGI Tech tripod here, put it low under this bench, and I'm gonna go stand there. So first I'm gonna do it on the FX3, and I'm not sure I'm gonna keep the ND filter on, um, because I kinda need dual native ISO to make that work properly. It's very overcast, so I think the high dynamic range thing that I wanna do is difficult, but just as a first shot, I'm just gonna give a plain normal shot from this, and we can test the colors because that bridge is very bright red. Um, yeah, so I think that's a good test. So I'm gonna put down the camera, put those two. I'll show you both clips on screen now, I guess, and not tell you which camera is which, so you can guess. And then when we are back at the computer at home, I will show you which one is which. So leave a comment down below, guessing in the meantime, and yeah, we'll go around and shoot some more here, but that's the first one. All right, this next shot is gonna be for testing the skin tone. So I wanna be quite up close. Right now I have the VR6 standing there, pointing up. The idea is I'm gonna be sitting here so you get the skin tones, but I wanna expose it for not clipping the highlights up there. So you can see anything, so you can get it to focus. I don't want it to clip the highlights. So I'm not exposing for the skin, I'm exposing for not clipping the highlights. And that's kind of gonna be the interesting part of seeing if that works or not, and just comparing them. So we're shooting at 24 millimeters and the ND filter is on 30 frames per second. And yeah, here you go. Just guess which one is which. All right, so another shot that I wanna get is try to get the dynamic range. So I think I'm gonna point it 
see if you can see anything up against the trees here and then the tree line and maybe behind that tree and then up against the sky so we have as much dark areas and as much bright area as i can get today because it's overcast i would have loved to have the sun there as well so i could actually expose them the exact same way but i'm just going to do this and i'm just going to try and put the exact same nd on both so i'm going to start with the r6 so i know exactly what settings to do on the fx3 and i'm going to get that shot as well and then i'm going to do one more close narrow focus shot as well so you're just going to see that after this one and i think that's enough for my testing for this particular uh, shoot and testing between the R6 and the FX3 because that's pretty much what I want to have shot here. So let's get it. That was it for the test. Let's head back and see what it looks like and compare the two. So you've already seen, you've already made your guesses below which one is which, hopefully. And now we're gonna look at which one was actually which and if there's any differences that I can see and that you can see. So let's look at it. All right, so I am back home. Well, it's actually the next day because I didn't get around to actually filming this part of the video yesterday after I did the testing. But as you just saw and hopefully made your guesses already on which camera was which, we're going to go through them now and I'm going to show you that, or I can tell you now that the left one camera A was the Sony FX3 and the right one camera B was the Canon R6. So I found some interesting things here, I think. And this is not any by any means a scientific test or anything. And I haven't done any of this kind of testing before. So don't take this for more than me just trying this out, comparing it with my Canon R6 and the FX3 for what I need and how I shoot. So if you need to do your own tests or watch something like Gerald and Dunn or something else to see what the actual dynamic range and sensor test and whatever else it is. So this is more like a real life practice kind of thing that I'm trying to test out here. So I have all the clips pulled up in here and we can compare them with the waveform and the colors and everything. So first of all, I just want to go through them and look at the lock image because I think there's some interesting things in terms of the waveforms here. So this was the first shot and the way I exposed this was just putting the exact same settings on both cameras. So I can pull up my phone right here and tell you exactly what those were because I took a picture of the screen. Shooting at 1 over 60 because I'm shooting 30 frames per second always. At f4, 5600 Kelvin, ISO 800 on both cameras and nothing to try and compensate for clipping anything, but there wasn't really anything that would clip in this image anyway. So what we have here is when you just look at them as the log footage side by side, I don't think you see a big difference. And of course we can really compare a log image like that. But an interesting thing happens when we look at the waveform itself. I see, or it looks like the FX3 is compressing the image a little bit more. You can see that the highlights are not sitting as high and the shadows are actually raised a little bit more. It looks like in some areas than it is on the Canon R6 that we have over here where the highlights are a lot higher. So what we can do is we can turn on the Rectional 9 conversion for both. So this is done for both of them. And we can see the exact same thing happen here. It looks like the R6 is exposed brighter than the FX3. And I don't know what that means in terms of like scientific stuff, but I put the exact same settings in. It could be that the sun or the sky just moved a little bit and the sun came through a little bit more. I don't know, between those two shots. I started with the R6 and then I did the FX3 after. But either way, I think both do a good job. I don't see a big difference. So what you saw earlier was actually the corrected images. So I put my LUT here on both of them. This is the Everyday Cinematic LUT 2 from my color pack. So you can grab that down below if you want to support my channel. That will help a lot. And what I did then for that, what you saw earlier was to actually just change the exposure for each of them to match them, just to throw you off a little bit. What I did here is I have the HDR wheels here. And I've just gone in for the color space and set it to DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate because that's the color space that I'm grading these in. And I've just, on the FX3, lowered it by one stop. The idea here was to get the skin tones, the brightest part of the skin tones, to lie around 70 here. Then for the R6, done pretty much the same, but instead of just one stop, 
it's actually 1.8 stops that I've reduced it to get it to look the same place. And now they both look like this. They might seem a little bit too dark, but this was just to get the skin tones right. And it was a very overcast day. And when we compare them like this, it looks like the FX3 might have slight bit more red color and saturation, but overall, when I compare the two with the lot on, I don't really see a big difference. You can try and take the lot off on both of them. And here again, it looks like there's a little bit more saturation on the left side in the FX3, but I don't see a big difference. And the thing is with color grading that I can make these look exactly the same. So you're not really gonna see a big difference in either of them. I think for this, in terms of a quality check, it looks like the FX3 with the dynamic range, and it does have a higher dynamic range as far as I know, maintains the colors or the exposure a little bit better. So there's more flexibility to work with, but that's really the only thing I'm seeing here. So that was pretty much the test for the first one. Again, these are just the clips playing back to back. I think both look good and I think they look pretty similar. So not really much to change. The Canon might look slightly more warm than the FX3, but these are just minor things that could be the sensors. And just because it's two different cameras, two different log profiles, it doesn't really matter too much. Then comes the next test. And this is where things actually got a little bit more interesting for me. So when I'm looking at this, again, we kind of see the same thing with the dynamic range here, that the Canon looks darker in this case than the FX3 does. So if you're looking, again, the way I exposed this was just exposing for the sky not to clip. That was the only thing that I did for this one. So I didn't care about exposing for the skin tones. I just didn't want the highlights to clip so the sky in the background in this case. And what we can see is that the Canon is significantly darker in the shadows than the FX3 is. And for me, that's a huge thing because what I'm often struggling with with the R6 is that it gets too dark when I'm trying to not expose or clip the highlights. So I kind of have to choose between do I want the skin tones to be correctly exposed? Do I want to lose and lose the sky? Or do I want to keep the sky in, but then having less room to work with with the skin tones afterwards? And it's kind of a give and take sometimes, but this is just, when we compare them, a pretty big difference, I think. So if we turn on the Rex 9 conversion for both of these here. You can see it here. The Canon is very, like a lot darker than the other one. And you can see that the scopes, they're actually landing pretty much in the same spot. They're landing almost in the same spot. So none of them are clipping in the highlights. There's just no detail in the sky because yeah, it was overcast. There's not really any detail to show, but it's not clipping. We can see that we have a nice roll off. Nothing is just fully clipping, which was the important part for me here. But the shadows in the FX3 sits significantly higher up than it does on the R6. And I did have to, on the FX3, I just put the ND filter on and it comes with a ND2 as a standard. It's like the Polar Pro VND. And on the R6, to not clip the sky, I had to turn it up to, I think, ND3, something like that, which is a little bit higher, which explains why the rest is darker as well. But otherwise, the sky would have clipped. So I don't know exactly what that means in terms of the dynamic range, other than if we compare to the previous shot as well, the R6 is just a bit brighter. It exposes a bit brighter. It seems like, or the sensor captures more light, I don't know. The All the settings were exactly the same on the camera. So it is only the ND filter that changed something here. And in order to not clip the Canon, I ended up having darker shadows, which is just a little bit of a shame. Apart from that, there's not really much of a difference when I put on the lot. Canon is just a little bit dark and that's pretty much it. So we could try and raise the exposure of the Canon here. Let's see where the skin tones are lying. They are lying up around 60. So if we turn it up by like 0.3 and turn on the exposure, that helps as well. Now they are lying somewhat more, I think, in the right spot. Yeah, now they're lying just around 70, which is a bit better. But if we then compare to the FX3 over here, sort of the same thing, but it just overall in the shadows is not as dark. It doesn't need as much. So if we switch to the FX3 here, I think we can just do like 0.1. We might already be there. Let's see if we can find another spot here that's a bit more similar. And just 1.0.2. Now it's just about the 70 mark. So I think overall the FX3 looks a bit cleaner and better, but yeah. It might also be the lower megapixel count. I'm just realizing that the FX3 only have 12 megapixels. So I don't know what the scientific reasoning for this is, but for me, this is a huge deal. The FX3 would be way better to shoot with in these conditions because I can have so much more detail without getting noise or anything and not clipping the sky at the same time. So that's kind of my, I think 
that's going to be my main finding for this overall. When I compare the two shots that was just off the tree and trying the kind of high dynamic range test, I think the previous one might have been better already. We see the same thing. It looks like it's a bit more compressed. It retains more detail overall the FX3 than the R6 does. So I don't think I have anything new to say in this. You can try and turn on the Rec. 709 conversion. And here we kind of see that the R6 is brighter once again. If you turn on my LUT, oops. If you turn on my LUT on both of them, it's pretty similar. The sky does look like it's starting to clip on the R6, so we'd probably have to lower the exposure overall, whereas the FX3 is maintaining it a little bit better. But they both land on sort of the same range in terms of the exposure or the, the darker side, so there's not really much to tell from this one, I think. And then the last one, again, we will probably just see that the FX3 looks a little bit more compressed, but here it's very, very little. And then if we turn on the conversion here, something like this, it's a little bit more saturated for the FX3. Again, these settings were exactly the same for this. And I actually had, that's another thing, I noticed on all of these clips, I had to crop the FX3 a little bit because the R6 is actually cropped more in in 4K. The tripod was sitting in the exact same spot, exact same focal length on both cameras. But the now it looks like it's the same, but the, R, uh, the FX3 was actually automatically wider because I think there is a crop on the R6 when you shoot in 4K. I never shoot in anything else than 4K, so I kind of forget about that crop, and that's just what I'm used to living with. But to compare these one to one, I had to go in and zoom it in. So if we wanted to go out and take the FX3 here, I've zoomed it in by 1.2 times. So if we just go back and remove that zoom from pretty much all of them, then we have a little bit more to show. But if we bring it back to this for a second, again, it's just a bit brighter on the R6. If you don't clip the highlights, I'm not sure it's gonna mean that much. The only thing is that in terms of the dynamic range, it also seems like the shadows are gonna be darker. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And then if we turn on the LUT on both of them, which is all the testing that I've done, they look pretty much the same. All the people who say, oh, Canon colors versus Sony colors. To me, this looks pretty much identical and I can tweak the colors a little bit or the temperature a little bit and then it will look exactly the same. So color wise, I don't think there's gonna be any difference between the two com cameras and that's not why I want to switch either way. In terms of dynamic range, there's a big difference. So that's definitely gonna be a thing. And then also that there is no crop in 4K. Now we can actually see that uh, for all of them, I had to push it around a little bit. But if we just compare them directly with each other here, you can see we have a little bit more to work with. You can actually see almost the entire bridge on the left from the FX3, whereas on the right, it's cropped a lot more. Doesn't mean anything particularly for the detail, but it's just nice. It feels like it's probably more true 4K or true, I don't know, no crop. That's pretty much what it means. And yeah, for the last one here. So in terms of my testing here, I think image quality, I'm not noticing a big difference. We could try and go in and pixel peep here, but I don't think it also depends on how I hit this, the focus and the sharpness on these. The FX3 looks a little bit sharper, but I, that's gonna be difficult to actually compare here, I think. It does look a bit cleaner and a bit sharper on the FX3 overall. See, this one is a good test. Nah, it's pretty much the same. I mean, I, I, if I have to go that close to the screen to actually see a difference, there's probably not that much of a difference. Overall, both images look pretty clean, so yeah, I don't know. But the thing that I did notice when I walked around with it yesterday, especially having 2470 on there, I don't know if it's just because I never blocked much on the R6 or if it's because the IPS is different, but it looked like on some of the shots, you maybe have noticed this in the vlog itself, it looks like the IPS is kind of like moving the sensor around when I'm talking and when I'm moving around. And I think I only have the active shot on steady. So I don't know if that's the thing, if it needs to be on active and if that makes a crop or anything. Uh, but it definitely looked a little bit odd. So I think even though I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not going to test the stabilization against each other. I'm probably not going to test them against each other, but I'm definitely going to do some more testing about or around the stabilization of the FX3. Not that I'm, oh well, I've been vlogging this week, so maybe. Um, normally I'm not vlogging much, so I'm not noticing the stabilization as much because I'm usually shooting from behind the camera with it. But yeah, 
It's just something I noticed. And then you saw earlier as well that the autofocus lacked a little bit sometimes. The first shot where I'm talking is just me, that I forgot to turn on the autofocus. So that's on me. The second shot in the park is looks like it didn't hit my eye at all. It looks like it's focusing like on my cheeks or something. It looks a bit off, um, but otherwise the autofocus has been flawless. But I've, of course, that's something to look out for as well. So some more testing to do, but I think overall my purpose with these first videos were to get more comfortable and more familiar with the FX3. And now for the last remaining 10 days, nine days, however long I have left with it, I'm gonna try and do more storytelling, more actual like cinematic shots to try and see where I can get to with that and push the FX3 even further. So some of you have asked some more questions. I'm gonna try and see if I can make some mini videos about those questions particularly. And other than that, feel free to ask more questions and I will see if I can test some of those things as well. I'm happy to do so, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope it was somewhat helpful for you as well to gather with me to walk through these shots and I hope you had fun guessing in the beginning as well. So with all that said, I'll just catch you in the next video. And until then, take care.